Evening, Kieran. Can you? Is the volume okay? Excellent. Hi, Adam. How you doing? Evening, Robert. Excellent. Yeah, this, as I said last week, it's my one thing is that nobody can hear what I'm saying. I have recurring dreams about that as a school teacher. You know, like the kids are just like, I can't hear what you're saying, sir. Evening, Phil. Glad you could join us. Don't forget, as always, um, add stuff in the uh, in the comments. Um, feel free to answer anything that comes up. Um, if you've got an idea, you've got a thought. Um, I mean, a lot of you have uh, got some really good, cool ideas. Um, just add them all up there, because we're all learning. Make sure you got yourself a, a drink of your choice. Tonight it happens to be a Zinfandel red wine. Um, hi Derek, it's good to see you. Well, see your name anyway. Can't wait to get back to doing this sort of thing, sort of live with people. Um, back down at me on Springs. I'm um, on Sundays. The Midas. Um, I have, um, Rodri, I have tied one. Um, it's not one that I use. Um, I tend to be on larger waters. You know, most of my dries tend to be for um, our smaller rivers um, and streams down here in, in Hampshire. But um, it's a pretty deadly fly, the Midas. Give everybody a few, a few minutes to to find their way here. So tonight we're uh, we're going to be looking at some more dry flies for my own box. I'm actually going to head out on the river tomorrow. Um, so it's going to be uh, a little bit of blue-winged olives, um, some of my favourite retire sedge type patterns, and whatever else I decide to uh, to throw in um, while I'm looking around at what's on my desk. Um, what I'm going to try and do is make sort of generic patterns more than anything. Um, and uh, and ultimately, um, you know, just with a, a few changes of materials and just, you know, the techniques are what matter. Um, that's all I, I can say. And I keep saying that week in, week out, you know, technique is forever. Patterns come and go. Um, you get your techniques right. Ultimately, keep practicing. You can tie absolutely everything. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Uh, Rodri, have you ever fished Cluedog? Dog? Uh, do you know what? Um, having grown up in South Wales, um, it was never one that I actually fished. Um, I must rectify that at some point. Um, I spent most of it on Flandegved and Fleece of Fran and, uh, and our home reservoirs in Cardiff, which were like Flannish and Lisbane, um, uh, on most of it and, and being kicked off the Usk and the Mono um, on various occasions. But we won't talk about that. 
Ah, hi Malcolm. Good to see you. Right then, guys. So we'll sort of get started. People are dropping. Um, and as I said uh, earlier on, if you've got any questions or you've got anything you want to ask or, you know, even just ask the group. It's fantastic. It doesn't just have to be me because there's people on here um, that are, you know, have got lots of experience as well. Um, and, uh, and we can all try and brainstorm ideas and thoughts. But um, I'm going to tie up some patterns that I know work on our rivers um uh, down here in hampshire um and uh, they're pretty um they're pretty lethal to be honest um I'm, and i'm tying on generally on a size 16 so the fly you can see here is sort of a take on a blue winged olive it's a variant there's lots of different ones that you can you can tie um and uh this is just a cdc uh um blue winged olive uh, which we're going to put together um show you a few techniques to work with that um and uh and how we can vary it and just by changing a couple of extra things you can you can make it a spent um a spinner you can you can change it into all sorts of things and this time of year you know blue winged olives well they're around all all year um but now is an exceptionally good time for them it tends to be afternoon into early evening but they can they will hatch uh, all over the time all over the place um so just uh i've got a selection of hooks out for us as, as well today because I, I tend to tie i have my favorites the same as everybody else um i'm really liking these fasteners at the moment um you know these dry barbless uh they're, they've got a great length on the on the shank which means i don't have to fiddle um but they've got this fantastic gape on them um and uh they're very very strong even though it says fine wire um, they're not as fine as some of the others that, that um, I've come across. Um, still liking my fully mills, um, you know, the uh, the ultimate dry fly. Slightly shorter shank on it, though. And, of course, um, the ever popular sprites. And this is, these are size 18s. Um, so um, we're going to tie on a fasner. See more people dropping in. Hello, Dave. Derek. Yeah, Derek, I, I really do need to get up, uh, up to Fluin Cluedog. Clu um, but I haven't been back to Wales for 18 months, almost two years now because of all this rubbish that's been going on. Um, need to rectify that and get up there. Right. Okay. So we're going to start off. I'm going to start off with, um, this is my Fasner, um, size 16 dry fly hook barbless because, uh, be on the river tomorrow. It's the F100. Um, and, um, I'm going to start off in the usual way with a 12 or um, brown wax thread. Um, this is Semperfly wax thread. I'm gonna make a nice underbody, keep them nice and tight by using this rear tag end. I'm not gonna take it all the way to the back because I want a little bit of, um, of the bare shank there for when I put the tailing material in. So for our tailing material, um, I'm gonna use um, Cocte Leon. You can use um, lots of other materials. You could use, uh, so you know, hen, um, uh, hen barb barbules from a from a, a hen feather, um, but I'm going to use Cocte Leon. It's more robust, and it just looks good. Um, quick key note: don't leave it lying around when you bought an expensive set um, where the cats can chew it, right? Because they get, I get very upset with them. Right, so I'm going to take my Cocte Leon, there it is, and I'm going to strip away the bits I'm just definitely not going to use down here at the bottom. I'm not going to use the whole thing, but it just makes it easier to manipulate and work out how many I'm going to use each time. So um, I quite like a, a clumpy type tail, um, and I'm going to pull it out at 90 degrees so that they, they stay level. And then I'm just going to pull those off and what I'm looking for is a length that's the length of the uh, the body of the fly um, I do like a slightly longer tail don't ask me why I just do um, 
so I tend to leave them slightly longer. I'm going to put a very loose wrap on the top and just pull it down so it's sighted onto the bare hook, um, not onto the thread. Um, and it sits better that way. And you can see that I've got my, my tail formed there, um, slightly longer than normal. There we go. Just pull it back. And what I'm then going to do is take those couple of extra turns just onto the bare hook just to hold it down. So it's then level. And then I'm going to take my tying thread and just place it underneath and just pull it up and just cock it up. There we go. Just cock it up so it sort of splits as well. Because we're sort of imitating a, um, one of the ephemera family here. Um, so, you know, think mayfly, think those sorts of things. Um, so, and the fish don't really, aren't really that bothered. So I'm going to take up my tying thread about three quarters of the way up the the shank here um, grab my scissors <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 45 degrees just trim that off and just tidy it up and just take my tying thread um, about I'm not sure what to say three four millimeters back because that's where I'm going to tie in my wing, um, uh, which for this one, I'm actually going to use um, some uh, some deer hair for my wing. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, and this is where it can be adjusted for your for your own tastes. Um, so I particularly like this um, nature spirit um, hopper deer hair. I was saying to somebody uh, earlier on, you know, I like it because it's it's very fine. Um, it's very straight. It's got very limited kinkingness, if that's even a word, um, running all the way through. It's always going to be a little bit wiggly going up, but it's not as um, corrugated, I suppose, as uh, as a lot of others. So I'm going to judge it. I'm going to take a pinch. So if I if I held it out, it's probably about half a centimetre um, of, of deer hair. You could put in a little bit more. And you can play with this and you, you you know this is where you can start to to produce spinners using the deer hair as the spent wings um, and I'm just gonna trim that off okay and then what I'm gonna do is as I've done before I'm just gonna flick away the fluffy parts of the under fur don't want any of that and then hold it quite close to the tips and just pull it back and remove any tiny little pieces of deer hair there we go okay now I'm going to take my hair stacker and drop it in and then I'm just going to give it a little knock now whenever I do this and there's no, no real answer to this. One of them always turns upside down. And it's very weird. And, uh, and I don't understand how it does it. Um, it's some sort of magic trick that the hair does. Um, but I always end up with one that I've got to pick out. I hasn't done it this time. One that i got to pick out because it's flipped. Um, and I end up with, the, uh, with that chunky end at the other end. That's very weird. Um, so I've stacked my deer hair and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer it up and I want it sort of the length of the body I don't want it too long um, and the reason for that is because I, I find that if you have it too long um, it does a number of things when you cast out it can spin and secondly uh, and that 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 spins up your leader as well and secondly, when it's on the water, even with a slight breeze, it will act as a sail and it'll start to kite across. And any sort of abnormal drift sometimes um, will just put the fish off. Um, and I'm not really looking for that. So, so there we go. That's about right. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to put a loose turn. And then I'm going to bring it round. And I'm not going to tighten until... I'm on I'm pulling up and then I'm going to continue back down and that's keeping it onto 
There you go. That's keeping it onto the top of my hook. There we go. And then all I'm going to do is trim off the waist at 45 degrees. Sharper the scissors, the better. And then I can tidy up at this head end. And we'll come back to that bit a little bit later. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up, push it back, and I'm going to form a dam of thread just behind the deer hair to cock it up. Don't worry if the odd, odd little deer hair just get comes a stray, you can always clip it out or resurrect it. You just want it to sit up so that you, you're forming your wing. Okay, so I'm going to come all the way back down to this bottom end again. And now we're going to form our body. Now, for this, I want a nice tapered body. Um, you could do this in a number of ways. Um, but I'm going to use um, the Semperfly K-pop dubbing again. Um, they do this nice BWO, blue winged olive, olive colour, um, which looks very dark when it's in the packet. But when you take it out, it's it's got this subtle olive hue to it. Um, you don't have to use an olive. You could use um, a slightly creamier colour. You could use a slightly redder colour because they come in um, and hatch in, in slightly different variations. Um, so, you know, whatever you've got is key. And the great thing about this K-pop is that, as you can see, that it sits on the thread with very little manipulation. And we get this nice dubbing noodle. I'm just going to push it up. And I'm going to keep it very tight at this bottom end. And then gradually work my way up towards the wing. And I'm going to build up a taper at this far end. Ooh. Build up a taper towards the towards the, the wing. There we go. I'm going to come in just in behind. Again, I've trapped a few, so let's just come back. Just give the stroke up. And there we have it. And we've started to develop our body. So um, for this particular one, what you could now do is tie in a hackle. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use some CDC for this um, as, a, as a, um, a lighter dressing, so to speak. Um, and I find they do sit a bit lower in the water as well, which is great. So I'm going to take some more of the K-pop dubbing. I'm going to make a very, very fine noodle this time. Very, very fine. And then I'm going to take a needle, dubbing needle, and I'm going to separate the wing into thirds. So I've got the back third, which I'm just going to push down. Like so. And I'm going to put in a turn or two of K-pop. And then I'm going to come in for the middle third, hold it back, one, two, and then I'm going to come in at the front and just build up my front section. Now what that does is it splays out the wing as well, because remember these are, um, these particular flies, these are up wing, they're quite broad winged flies. OK, um, and uh, you could just leave it at that. You know, you could tie it off. It'll it'll float. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in front of it. I'm going to put in a, a CDC hackle um, at the front to so give it some some legginess. Just tie those off to give it a little bit of legginess. There we go. Come back to that. Um, and I just so happened that, um, well, I've, I've got all sorts of colours of CDC lying around. Um, but I've got this nice, um, this is Vineyard's 
Um, it's not the best, it's okay, it's great for doing this sort of thing. Um, it's dyed done, um, CDC, a one gram packet. Um, I've got a vague recollection that I bought it at, at last year's Sportfish show, which I know is uh, going virtual as of tomorrow. Um, you know, so, so ultimately, um, it's a pity that it's not on because I quite like going to that show, meeting up with old and new friends and uh, having a beer and a, and a, and a, and a pasty or a hog roast actually, wasn't it? Hog roast. Um, so it just sits up like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, uh, a petty John tool, magic tool. If you've not come across these yet, um, great little pieces of kit, um, and I'm going to use it to clamp down my CDC feather. I'll do a, a video at some point and show you how I use it. And it and it holds it a bit like this. Now, you could use a bulldog clip, but the springs on these um, uh, particular uh, clips are at just the perfect tension. So that you just push it down and it drops in. And when, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off the ends and then I've got it here somewhere I've got this other clip bulldoggy type clip what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it in and it holds on to it and I'm going to pull it out and I'm left with my with my feather and now this is where I'm looking for my big long scissors which I now can't see um, so I'm going to come in with these um, and I'm going to trim off the stem of the feather as close as I can. So I don't want to waste any, any of the feather. There we go. And I'm left with the CDC there. Now I'm going to put this into a split thread. Um, so I'm going to use my, my thread splitter. Just going to rub across and just use it just to split my thread. There we go, nice and split. And then I'm going to take my bulldog clip and I'm going to place it inside the split, and then I'm going to trap the CDC feathers and release them and then hold them again and move them up now you don't have to do that bit but it does help and we've got them all trapped now and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to spin it so i'm going to shorten this and naturally just leave it to spin and it will form uh, a nice um, concentrated mass of cdc now you could put more than one feather in, depending on the size of the hook or how much buoyancy. I find one is fine. Um, and once I've got it as I as I wish it, I want it to be. There it is. Okay. Um, I'm then going to tie it in as a hackle to give it a, a pull back and then work my way towards the eye of the hook, using up all of the feather. As I move in towards the eye of the hook. There we go. And then it's a case of just tidying up at the front. There we go. Tidying up at the front. A bit of wax, extra wax. And then I'm going to come in, make sure I don't trap any fibres. I'm going to whip finish, two, three, give it a pull, there we go, drop it in, got a little bit of wax just caught on there, and then I'm going to come in with my little scalpel blade, just push it, and you can see we've got nice passable sort of blue winged olive pattern, um, I do like just to trim away these top sections. I don't want them too long. And then I do like to come in and just trim at an angle 
there so more of a traditional uh, get rid of that one there don't want that and there we have it and you drop that in front of prospecting rising trout and I reckon they'll take that Okay, right. So I'm sorry. Just looking at the looking at the screen because I've got some questions that have come up. Um, let me just have a look look back. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, the Petitjon tools I do like them. They are pricey, um, but they're worth their weight in gold if you really want to uh, if you really want to up your game. Um, Phil could you use a dubbing loop you could use a dubbing loop the thing to um, to watch out for with the dubbing loop um, and I tend to use a dubbing loop if I'm if I'm doing bodies with it um, is that you're doubling up the the diameter of your thread rather than um, rather than uh, just having the, the the single thread that you split in half um, and that can add bulk um, and can just make it very fiddly so just you know have a play you know um uh, you know and uh, i'm going to use that on the river tomorrow um and if i catch a fish on it right um i'm going to call it the sprat okay in honor of uh, mr sprat who asked me to tie it um what you could do so i'll come back to it. what you could do is then vary it um so instead of the cdc collar i mentioned earlier tying in um uh, 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 a cock hackle and then tying it through the deer hair so the deer hair is sitting up so when i split it into thirds earlier is by putting a turn of or turn or two behind the wing just to just to cock it up split it into a third put one in the middle third again in the middle and then finish it at the front down down to it and it holds the wing right up in that in that rather nice um ephemera um uh um up wing style that we're looking for okay um so um that's one of my favorites um if you want to do it and turn it into a spinner you just make the um you could use um antron you could use poly yarn um something that's uh that's a, a good floater as the wing split it in half separate it out you know and go from there um next fly <clears throat> let me have a look oh dave would you trim the bottom hackle um quite often um but at the water side um not necessarily before i go um because um it depends on how it's going to sit and sometimes i like the front hackle to cock the fly right up so that it sits more as an emerging type of fly into the uh um uh into the um uh, the surface film um but if they're being really finicky as they can be on the itching as you know um and they will only take things that are really low down into that surface film um a uh, a trim or even better if you turn it upside down in the vise and you you just singe the bottoms off and you get these tiny little feet like structures i suppose uh, that sit there and they dimple into the surface tension if you look at it in a glass and look at it up um, so it's worth having a play. Okay. Um, so um, next one I'm going to tie. I'm going to go keep keep with the sixteens. Um, it's a uh, it's a fly that um, actually Kieran um, introduced me to. It wasn't one that I'd particularly had on my radar. Um, and um, and it's been tied by lots of people, so no, nothing's new. And it, it was a something called a retire a sedge. And uh, and Kieran was just pulling out fish after fish after fish on it. Um, and obviously I was sitting there going, yeah, well done, mate, while inwardly seething. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to steal the pattern. Um, so um, so ultimately, um, <clears throat> I thought I'd steal it. And over the sort of the last 18 months or so, um, I sort of um, played around with it, made my own little adjustments to it. Um <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I'm not going to say that you're guaranteed to catch a fish on the, on the test, 
but um, it's depending on what beat it is and how well they stocked it, um, you're going to catch fish. Um, so, um, so yeah, give it a go. And I reckon, I reckon, I reckon, I can't guarantee, but I reckon you'll either hit into a fish or they'll have a lot of interest in it. OK, um, so I'm going to I'm just going to use very similar materials again. Same thread. Not going to change that. Brown seems to be pretty ubiquitous, to be fair. Um, same again. I'm going to start off a millimetre or two away from the eye. Give myself a guide. And then I'm going to make a nice little base of thread, keeping it nice and tight. And there's been lots of discussion, isn't there? And there was discussion in the group about, you know, um, if you look at my vice here, you know, I've got the uh, the tip of my hook sticking out. Now, if I if I put that tip of my hook deep into the vice to hold it, so I can't see it, I'm actually <laughs> physics. Physics will tell me that um, actually that that le longer lever is going to result in me bending the uh, bending the hook. Um, I don't ever catch my fingers. I don't catch the thread very often. Occasionally I do if I'm not concentrating. Um, but as you can see with the with these sort of very arrow pointed jaws I've got here on this fantastic vice, um, it just wouldn't be possible. And uh, my anvil atlas vice, and I know Dave, you've got an anvil atlas as well. Um, that um, that ultimately. Um, that ultimately, <laughs> uh, um, it's got even finer points on the on the jaws. You just can't hide it at all. So you got to you've got to tie it like this. Um, okay. So um, so ultimately, oh yes, I did. So ultimately, um, you know, this is how I tie. So for this one, I'm going to put a tail, some tail material in. Um, I'm going to use, um, this is just grey Antron. Um, I bought a job lot of Antron um, off eBay. Um, and, and there must have been about 40 to 50 cards of Antron in lo loads of different colours. I'm never going to tie with it all. <laughs> but you know what we're like, just buy loads. So um, I'm just going to place this on. Let's come back a bit. Place this on. Now you can do this two ways. You place it on the top, or I like to bring it under and just sight it on the top, and it sits. And then I just bring my tying thread over, lock it into place, and there we have it. Okay, I'm not worried about the length at the moment. I'll worry about that in a minute. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take my tying thread um, up, just trim this bit off a little bit. It's a bit long. I'm just going to take my tying thread. Up like this, just tidy it up to about three quarters of the way up, and again, that all important 45 degree snip. There you go, to get that taper. And you'll notice, or I hope you notice, that I try not to use the scissors very often when I tie, I try to use them when I need to rather than when I have to, you know, than overusing them and cutting lots of stuff all the time. Um, now for this particular fly, it's got quite a stubby um, little tail, so I'm going to come down and I'm just going to trim it off so about three or four mils. There we go, and she's in. So there we go. You can make it shorter than that, but that's absolutely perfect. Just finish tidying up. Now the body on this. Um, again, I'm going to go um, into the K-pop again. Got some more K-pop, um, and um, I quite like a red on this. And I found this um, this particular colour here. It's the uh, the marginata um, uh, with the K-pop. Um, it's got a pinky hue to it, um, and the browns and the pinks um, I think are pretty pretty cool. So I'm going to take some pinches of of that. Just wax my thread a little bit, and. I'm just going to put on a dubbing loop. And again, I want it quite tight. It's not. I don't want this bit to be the buggy bit as such. I can tie buggy. I want this one to be more tapered. So as I bring it up, I can come back on myself. It makes a nice tight body to about, what shall I say, halfway. 
So this is a this is the uh, the addition for me is I turn it into sort of like a half sedge hog um, sort of sedge. Um, so I'm going to go back to my hopper deer hair, um, and I'm I'm going to take a, a a small clump about half the size that I previously did. So I'm going to be adding to it. So you know only about so much and trim it off and I'm gonna just flick away the fluff at the end and any short pieces and give it a quick stack just a couple of, uh, of taps bring it out hold it have a look at it I've got one long piece there that shouldn't be there so you can go you're gone right so I'm now going to offer it up and I don't want it to be really long um, the back one near I, the back part of the wing I want to be longer than the front so I'm gonna about towards the length of the tail and I'm just gonna hold it on top and notice that I've still got my k-pop dubbing wound on so I'm gonna bring it round and drop it down and tighten it up and then I'm just gonna have a look at it and I've got my first part of my wing kicking in and then I'm just gonna use my 45 degree cut trim it off and if you keep to sort of the 45 degrees each time you can pack in a lot of deer hair um, and a lot of uh, sections and if you wanted to make a full sedge hog you just do exactly the same as this um, you just keep building up the layers of, uh, of deer hair. Um, and then I'm going to add in a second. Again, I'm going to just flick away. Put it in my stacker. And... So I'm chuckling inwardly because I'm watching what people are writing. Yeah, whatever, Kieran. And I'm going to go through the same process, but this time I'm going to make it slightly shorter because I want it sort of I want I want it to be fan shaped rather than all one length. If I was going to do it one length, I may as well just put it all in in one go. Um, so I'm just going to a bit shorter. Go through the same process again. There we go, got my, there we go, just going to come in, forty five degrees, get rid of that in the bin, and I've still got lots of space there at the front, so I can pack in lots of extra bits in there that are just going to make this um, uh, a really highly floating um, fly. That's gonna. Um, I'll tell you what. What we're hitting it actually, and, and um, was um, uh, uh, Chub um, on the Mion. Um, put this on in small sizes, and they were hitting it just as it hit the hit the uh, um, hit the surface, um, which was fun. So I'm gonna put a third bit in. You could stick with two, but I'm gonna put a third in. So I like to have quite a lot give it a, a tap bring it out get rid of loose bits maybe have a little bit too much there so I'm just gonna take a bit out and again I want to shorten this there we go And then I'm going to bring it in, hold it onto the top. Don't worry if it flares out at the other end. Here it's naturally going to do that because of all the air in it. And I'm just going to trim that away. So retire a sedge sort of sedge hoggy pattern. Um, 
I'm just going to tidy up this front end just to make the next bit easier. There we go. And you can see that we've got this nice structured wing effect running through it. Now, if you wanted to make it into a sedge hog, you'd start putting the wing in really down here and just building up as you come all the way forward um, and then just tying off at the end. Great little pattern. Um, so um, next thing I'm going to do, and this is something which I, I started to do at the end of last season from about um, from about August onwards. Um, because I was tying this, I was down in Devon, and I was tying this with my with my little nephew, whose name is Nevin, um, and um, we ultimately gave it a name at the end, which I, which uh, I'll tell you in a minute. But I got I had this really bright yellow um, spinning deer hair, um, and again, it's very fine. And what what he asked me to do was he said, "Well, could you put some of that on the fly?" And I said, why would I want to do that? And he said, well, you'd be able to see it, Uncle Mark, and when it's on the water. And I thought, do you know what? You're eight years old. You've told me something that, that I should have noticed. And you're absolutely right. Why not have a sighter post on it of some sort? Because with all the glare on the water and different shadows, anything that's going to give me that extra level of ability to see it so I took some of this yellow and I just popped it at the front in exactly the same way there we go I put that bright yellow on the front and when I fished with it when I came back from the holiday I was on when I fished with it we were on the uh, we were on the itching it, a it was very very easy to see on the water and B, first cast, it caught fish, <laughs> which was fantastic. Um, and I sent him, I sent my nephew um, via his mum a picture. And I called this particular pattern. And it's just a silly. I called this one the Nevenator after him. Um, so this is called the Nevenator in, in my fly box in, after my little nephew. Um, but you can see that we've got this rather nice yellow here at the front as a sighter now same as i've done before the retire sedge has a cdc hackle on it so i'm going to use the blue done again you can use whatever you've got i'm going to use the blue done and show you how quickly you can um you can just produce your split thread i'm just going to take my feather i'm just going to spread it out put it in the Petitjean magic tool, push it down, trim off the ends, come in with the bulldog clip, hold it. This is where a long pair of scissors really helps. And I put them down somewhere. And I'm just going to trim there we go. I'm just going to trim away the stalk. There we go. Trim away the stalk so I've got my CDC. Um, in it goes. I come in with my Petit Jean tool. Split my thread. It's a lot easier than it looks um, splitting thread and, and, and putting in material and you can use this um just lost it you can use the um the petit jean tools for not just for putting in feathers but also for building up body materials and layers of sparkle and all sorts of things um, some great videos done by um, mark petit jean himself that shows you how so i'm just going to take those out i'm going to give it a spin There we go. I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to treat it like a hackle, like a cock hackle. I'm going to come in, bring it back, push it back. And this is why a fine thread and a single thread, a split thread, might be better than that doubled up thread. Um, 
And again, it gives it the buggy leggy look at the front. You've got the wing. I'm just going to tie, tidy up the front. Like so. Come in with my whip finish tool. Two, three, come back down, tighten in, pull up. I talk to myself a lot when I fly tight. And I'm just going to pull everything back come a little bit too further over the eye than I'd want to there, but hey, it's going to catch fish. Um, it's not perfect. It'll go in the box. Trim off some of these longer pieces. There we go. We've got another favourite for the river, um, which is the... Um, uh, is the Retira Sedge. With the difference, a little bit of a sedge hog. Half sedge retire, the retire. Okay, so again, give that one a go. Now, it seems, you know, for, for all of these, uh, you know, you don't have to use um, a split thread CDC. You can, you can innovate, you know, you can, you can use different materials for the wings. You know, ultimately, um, when you look through all the books, um, one of the books that I've got, what, what do I do with it? It's around somewhere. Um, World Encyclopedia, there it is. Hang on. <laughs> I spent hours, I, I'm so, I get, my wife calls it fishing porn, because I'll sit there and I'll just browse through these, um, and, uh, but, and I'll be storing patterns and ideas in my head, and pulling out things that I think, oh, maybe, I, maybe that would work with this, and I could put that in that, and, but when you look at, many of these and particularly a lot of the old original but the techniques and the materials they just change them around it's the same sort of fly but they're just changing the color the length of some materials so so just be be a bit innovative ultimately okay so i hope you like that hope you like that one um so uh, let's see what else people are saying here um i might have missed a few things apologies if i have um <laughs> Uh, yeah, dace, Phil, um, but particularly in a smaller size because dace have got very small mouths and they tend to just pluck at it. If you ever fish um, Brick Farm Lakes down in Sussex, they've got lots of dace in the lake um, and uh, they're bloody irritating, um, particularly when you're targeting um, targeting the trout. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, so all of that on a 16. You can, I tie them on an 18 as well, Chris. Um, they're pretty deadly on an 18, particularly on the smaller streams um, and, uh, and and so on. Um, so K-Pok, it's so fine. It winds super tight and gives a great segmented effect. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Um, it's not one. I, I don't... There's a dubbing for different um, uses. Um, I do like Andrew Scruffy dubbing if I want a real buggy effect, if I want to get lots of legs out of it. But if I want to go back and I want to start tying... Um, really fine segmented bodies um where the emphasis is actually more on the wing and the front profile um the kpok i'm just finding is just fantastic um okay so so two flies down <coughs> excuse my cough two flies down um so let's have a let's have a look at um uh, a couple of others um if we've got the time so again size 16 OK, um, and I'm literally going to tie up a super simple um, bubble um, emerger style pattern um, that, again, is absolutely deadly here on the itching. And I can imagine at Manningford on the Avon it would be as well. Um, and again, the chub like it too, which is fantastic. So um, I'm going to start off exactly the same. Size 16 hook. This time I'm, I've gone for my full in mill, just because it's what I had in front of me. Don't know what I did with the other ones. Um, and I'm going to put on a nice little thread base. There we go. 
and I'm going to go back to my Coq de Leon for my tailing. To be honest, I tend to use it for every tailing if I can. Um, it's a medium pardo, so it's relatively dark, but with some beautifully light banding on it. Um, but it's strong, it's robust, it sits up, it doesn't snap, it doesn't get totally waterlogged. It's fantastic stuff. So again, I'm just going to place it on, judge how long I want it. I'm just going to come back and take a couple of wraps off. So I want my bare hook shank. I'm going to a bit of fluff there. I'm going to offer it up at an angle. Bring it across, loose turn. Second one just cocks it onto the top. And for this one, I'm, I'm going to leave it slightly longer than I normally would. Um, because um, I found that it, it just allows it to sit in the surface film. Again, I'm going to cock it underneath just the cock up. There you go, the tail. And then I'm going to bring this up towards the eye, about two thirds up. And trim that off. Now what you could do, is you can now just build up a thread body. Absolutely fine. Um, and, uh, and that thread body um, could just be it. There's no need to go and throw in new materials or anything else um, if you want to. Um, but... I'm just going to add in some material that I've got lying around on the bench. I'm going to go back to my um, my peccary from last week. There it is. Okay, just because I had a little bit of this lying around. And, uh, and I'm just going to tie in the tip. Bring it back to the tail. Take it up about three quarters of the way up. And I'm going to use the peccary now to form... My body and hopefully get that nice segmentation that we might see on an upwing fly. There it is. And if you give it a little pull, um, it compresses really nicely, I've discovered. Um, it's very spongy. And you can start to see those very pretty bands starting to appear you can go further up than you need to because you can always come back and cover them and there we go i'm just going to drop in a locking turn second locking turn trim off 45 degrees tidy up the end and then i'm just going to bring the thread back a bit onto the peccary so you can see already this really quite nice segmented um, insect like um, body that peccary really gives um, uh, so so uh, yeah absolutely fantastic right so next bit now for this next bit i'm going to use some cdc um, and i tend to my high quality cdc so I've got some really nice Petitjean CDC um, and, and from other places. I know that uh, um, I, I got some really fantastic stuff from, from Malcolm and Kieran. Um, I tend to keep the, the, the sort of the less useful feathers, like this really curled one here, um, for this sort of thing. So I'm going to take three or four of these. And take them out of the packet. I want them all roughly the same length, um, which isn't always easy because in those packets they're not graded. You get some long ones, you get some short ones, you get some medium sized ones, and you get some ludicrously small ones that nobody is ever going to use um, to make up the weight. So, what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to Get the tips together. There we go. And then I'm going to put a fourth one in. I'm going to use the curve of the feathers. I'm going to have the curve, have them all concave. And then what I'm going to do, making sure I've got them all there, 
is I'm going to take them by the, the ends like so. So I've got them all there. And I'm going to hold them down. And I'm going to put one, two, three turns on. And then I'm just going to have a look and see what that does. And will I have enough to bring it forward? Yeah, I will. And what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to pull the ends through and shorten that front section. Because what I'm looking for is it to be able to come across like this and form a bridge but I don't want too much of the very thick stalk up towards the eye so about the length one and a half times the length of the tail is perfect and then I can tie it in and this is where these um, become quite bulky with these stalks which is why I've reduced that bulkiness down so that even at this front end I can then taper it and just come back a bit like so so when I when I bring it across what I'm looking for is for it to come over the top form a bubble but I want these strands to be poking out the back so these are these are going to form leggy type of structures and they sit in the water and they just sit on top in that surface film so I've got that bit there. So we almost got an F fly there. But um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, if I can find it. I'm just going to grab um, some um, of this um, uh, natural fur which I've got in this dispenser I um, don't actually know, remember who makes it it's made in the USA it doesn't actually have a name on it but it's got um, lots of fox squirrel um, and uh, beaver and all muskrat and all sorts of things and I really like the fox squirrel in here because it's got it's really buggy um, so I'm just going to open it up make sure I know which one is the fox squirrel um, if you see fox squirrel in packets um, anywhere, um, buy some, is what I'll say, because it's really hard to get hold of because everybody buys it. Um, people are in the know, um, particularly for these sorts of flies. So I'm just going to put a bit of wax, and I'm just going to dub fox squirrel. You can see that it's it's very different to the K-pop already. We've got this big buggy type effect and I want this quite loose there we go put a couple of turns in just have a look I put a bit more on there it's all about what you're happy with and what it looks like to you you know we're not tying for an award here we're tying for to catch fish but I would actively encourage everybody to join the Fly Dressers Guild um, because they are they do do run really good sessions. Um, so I'm just going to pull that back, my four strands, making sure I've got some bits trailing. I want those trailing bits, and I'm just going to pull the front over, and I'm not going to keep it really tight. I'm not. I, I want it as a bubble. So almost as a bouffant hairstyle. So I'm just going to hold that in place and just pull down two. And there we have it. So I've got this nice bouffant hairstyle with this, this real leggy position here. Now you could leave this front section on um, if you wish. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to come in just on this one and just put a couple of turns just underneath just to flick it up. So you could leave that on, nothing wrong with that. And you could uh, fish with it like that. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna take these bits off. Just give it a trim, it's that 45 degrees. Take off the bits 
that always just miss. And then come back down to the eye and just tidy up that front section. Starting from the front, working your way back. There we go. Just give it a check. Like so. Bit of wax. We come in with a couple of turns with my there we go. Come in with my scalpel, just knock that out there. What I'm gonna do as well on this one is I'm gonna turn it the other way up. And I'm just gonna use a needle and I'm just gonna pluck out a bit more of this um, fox squirrel. Now you could use your dubbing brush for this, but I find that it displaces some of the CDC and, and um, get a bit more finesse with, a, with the dubbing needle, just to pick them out, just at the bottom. Because we want that leggy, the merger style. And there we have it. So we've got a, a, another version which could be used during an olive hatch of a bubble emerger nice segmented body um under there which you can't see most of the time but it just looks good um uh and uh and you know it it does something for my sense of the fly looking natural um rather than really synthetic um so fly number three Okay, let's have a look. Uh, got time for a royal wolf. Not today, buddy. Not today. I will do one. I will do the wolves if you'd like. Um, maybe next week. Um, I just need to make sure I've got everything. Uh, Neil, Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm Greenhouse signed your copy of your book. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, Fox Squirrel. Um, fox squirrel, somewhere that generally has fox squirrel is funky fly tying. Um, uh, but they're always sold out. Uh, <laughs> and it's really hard to get hold of. Every time I go on there, somebody else, probably you, Jordan, has been on there and bought it all. Um, so, uh, so yeah, fantastic. Um, Luke, do these last a couple of fish or takes or is it a one off? Um, these will last personally, and Kieran will attest to this, I'm sure. Um, they often last multiple trips and multiple fish. Um, uh, occasionally you'll get one that will that will muller it completely but if you look after them and and after uh, you caught the fish on particularly this one you leave it to dry and uh, and you get rid of all the fish slime and you tend to it it'll be good enough for the next uh, the next one okay um, so um, so three flies for your box um, give them a try what I'm not seeing, what I'd like to see more of in our group is, um, is, is if you're tying them, um, show us what they look like. I know, and it could be quite daunting, but I'd like to see what they look like, or just send them to me. Um, I'd like to be able to have a look. Um, it's always nice to know that people are catching on patterns that, uh, that I've put together um, and that I'm showing. Um, and remember, you can tie all of these slightly bigger or smaller, um, depending upon um, uh, your tastes and, and and where you're fishing at any particular time. Um, any questions, throw them up, chuck them to me. Um, we'll be back again next week. Don't know what we're going to be tying next week. Uh, we'll see how the river goes tomorrow. Um, and I might suddenly find out that, um, that that we've got an early mayfly hatch and I'm going to start tying mayflies. Um, so um, we'll have a look. But um, I'll leave you for the evening. Um, thanks for coming. Um, and glad you keep supporting me. Have a good evening.